tonight, as the police in West Yorkshire send in the dogs, Zimba gets her man. No obstacles too great for Otto. What is it? Bella's after illegal drugs. In Wales, elite police dog Jack tracks down a killer. And tomorrow's super dogs. Trouble in the maternity room. What was going to do? <laughs> The lot of a British police dog is often far from easy. In Bradford, a dog handler has been ordered to get himself and his dog involved in a high-speed pursuit of a dangerous driver. They blew Citroen Zara, failing to stop, on Shearbridge Road in the centre of Bradford. A lunatic behind the wheel, pursued by a posse of police cars. Sounds very dangerous, cos he's ramming police vehicles. Once the man stops or crashes, Waddle's dog will be sent in to catch him. But for now, he isn't joining the chase. He's there, look. He's coming towards us. Look at the speed he's going at that. Just ridiculous, isn't it? I found myself on a road where the stolen vehicle was actually being driven directly towards me. PC Worrell and the rest of the pursuing posse have no idea why the man failed to stop for the police. Only a fool would try and either park the vehicle broadside or try and head directly to ram the oncoming offending vehicle. You have to yield, certainly keep out of the way to avoid a, a serious collision. All I can do is just stay in the area and keep abreast, hoping that when if he, he bails out that we can sort him out. You know, um, a system with dog, but I can't get involved in that. It's now becoming a game of cat and mouse, with a dog or two waiting in the wings. There he comes. We're getting involved and getting out of way. I just think he had no regard for public safety, probably his own safety. He was probably on drugs or alcohol or both, and he really didn't give two hoots about anybody. And that includes the innocent people of Bradford. The car was uh, heading towards Bradford City Centre, and being a, a busy Saturday night, it was a, a concern for all of us. Police commanders are now sending in more and more members of the dog squad, just in case. Also, X-ray Delta 185, you're also shown code 6 in the area. 185, I'm in the area. PC Lawman and his German Shepherd Zeus are one of West Yorkshire's top dog teams. Zeus, who's seven years old, is a dog squad veteran, as is PC Lawman. They've been together for four years. I'm on the outskirts of city centre, so I volunteered to move in towards where the chase was happening. Try as I might, I couldn't latch on to the following group. While PC Lawman desperately tries to catch up, another West Yorkshire dog team have been told to get involved in another car chase. It's 20 miles away, near Leeds. PC Tim Yates and his dog Otto are just round the corner. Otto is a rookie police dog, three years old, and a partner to PC Yates for just 18 months. But Otto is already a highly trained tracker with one of the best noses in the business. Out on the streets, it was nothing more than confronting people. <laughs> Whatever the situation is, he's up for it, he's barking away, he's pulling in his collar, and that's exactly what I want out of a police dog. PC Yates isn't close enough. This chase is already over, and the car thief or thieves have set fire to the vehicle. This is going to knack on a far track, something chronic. Smoke is a sniffer dog's worst nightmare. It plays havoc with the nose. Yeah. Same car with one light hanging out, and it's all side stuff. I'm kidding, this kid just run. Real Tell him to come back. To make matters worse, the temperature has fallen to minus six. Finding the suspect is going to be hard. Yeah. 
due to the time of day, the weather conditions, the, um, the vegetation on the ground, it, was, it would have been a hard track for him to follow. I've cast him around a bit, if you like, what I'll do is I just move him backwards and forwards, um, see if he picks anything up. He's not really picked anything up, so I thought, well, I've nothing to lose here. Police officer with a dog, show yourself now, I'm going to release the dog! So I've just let him off his lead. If he picks something up, he picks something up. So we've basically just followed the track. Oh, there's a couple of layers of footprints here. Hi. So he's using his nose rather than looking, uh, which is why he's doing a lot of zigzagging. He's just trying to pick something up. And... In Bradford, they know exactly where their quarry is. He's still driving like a lunatic, and PC Lawman is still trying to get near him. Shift yourself. The man is still heading for the city centre. And there's now an even bigger danger. The front tyre of the tearaway car has blown. When the tyre blew, it, it can be a very particularly dangerous part uh, of the pursuit due to the fact that the vehicle is unbalanced. Um, it doesn't have uh, the correct steering uh, and the driver doesn't have the full control of the vehicle. The car was travelling at quite excessive speed. Being uh, Saturday night, there's lots of people in the city centre. Our concerns were uh, for members of the public. This man's race is run. Do you want the dog? Is he, is he cuffed or whatever? But his road rage isn't. Out! Get your legs out! For once, Zeus is surplus to requirements. Not a role he relishes. He can but wait and watch while his sidekick gets stuck in. Put your legs out! <coughs> what Mark did then was probably uh, went forward as a, as we say, as a conventional resource. Mark got involved himself in the arrest. He does get stuck in, uh, along with other Bradford South um, dog handlers. Um, he didn't always have to get his dog out, um, and on this occasion he didn't, he didn't need to. Um, and he came and he gave us a hand. But Mark, yeah, likes to be at the front and to uh, assist as much as he can. That's Do it, it now! That's it, head down. That's it now, stand up. Stand. Stand! Keep your head stand down. up! Keep your head down. In Leeds, PC Yates and Otto can't find hide nor hair of their quarry. The smoke's still a problem, even though the fire brigade's here. But the extreme cold and almost total blackness makes the search dangerous as well as difficult. When you're going into dangerous situations, I know it sounds stupid, but I feel a lot safer with a dog than a gun. They scare the living daylights out of me, the guns. The dog's going to give you at least a good indication that there's something or somebody there. Whereas with a gun, you know, somebody could just jump straight on you without you even knowing. At least with the dog, you've got some sense that there's something there, so you know then that you're wary of what's happening. What is it? Coming up, Bella gets stuck in. Ooh, what is it? Will Otto deliver the goods? And PC Lawman and the headbanger. Outside Leeds in West Yorkshire, Otto and PC Yates are still hunting for their car thief. It's six below, they've been at it for an hour, and they haven't even caught a cold. The ground's frozen, so it doesn't hold the scent very well. So basically, it's just, <laughs> if you like, scavenging for something. The wind's blowing in our faces. So, if it's going to pick up anything, if the person, if this lad's squat in the bushes somewhere, the wind blows in his face. As soon as he gets a whiff of that, he'll stop and he'll spin on a sixpence and go straight to where that source of scent's coming from. Tracking is Otto's forte. Getting over gates isn't. 
you certainly got to be fit to do this job. People might think, oh, all you do is just take your dog out for a walk. That's all you do all day. If you're following or tracking uh, with the dog and you're on the end of the lead, you don't want to be hindering the dog. Because if you're lagging behind and pulling at the dog's neck, he's going to get frustrated and start thinking, well, you know, I'm wanting to go with it and you're stopping me. So you've got to be able to keep up with the dog. And it's hard work. The chances are that, you know, he's long gone. I'm just going to finish off doing this field uh, and then we're just going to knock it on the head. But all that might change. Otto's nose is twitching. Come on, stop looking for animals. Elsewhere, luck, another right? handler is walking the dog. Two of them. Not searching for criminals, not taking a break. Something police dogs need to do at least twice a day. I think it's quite important to get them out and give them a give them a trot as often as possible, to be honest. If it's uh, any downtime, it's, it gives me a bit of exercise at the them. Let's get on. German Shepherd Lex has been a canine cop for four years. His handler, PC Ian Moore's second dog, is a new addition to the squad. Two-year-old Cocker Spaniel Bella is a highly trained, multi-skilled sniffer dog who specializes in finding drugs, money, and explosives. A formidable combination. Bella! Hey, come up. Get on. Having two just adds to the fun of it, really. I get to go to, shall we say, the, the decent job, so to speak. I'm called to people fighting, people with knives, people breaking into people's houses, cars, etc., stuff like that. Plus, I get to go and search for drugs, guns, money. That's what it's all about. That's what I joined the job for, uh, to lock up the bad guys, really. And the bad guys are calling. PC Moore and Bella are needed. Extra Delta 185, uh, can we have your attendance at Concordia Street in the centre of Leeds, please? West Yorkshire Police receive over 11,000 emergency calls every week. This one's about drugs. A man in a car has been stopped in the centre of Leeds. An informant reported that he had drugs. None have been found. Bella's nose is needed to search his car. There isn't an illegal substance she can't smell. Go find it. She'll find the likes of heroin, cocaine, crack cocaine, ecstasy, amphet, cannabis bush, cannabis resin. Quite a wide scope of uh, talents, really. As Bella starts work in the car, outside the city, Otto and PC Yates have almost given up. The fresh lead which caught Otto's nose is the wrong game. He's gone after a rabbit. Oh, it's a rabbit. <whistles> Come on, stop looking for animals. I was a bit gutted, to be fair, because I honestly thought we'd got something. Come on, this way. It was very dark. There wasn't many people about, so anybody that was milling about that time of night is obviously going to be related to this car. And he sort of lifted his head up and centred something, picked something up, let him off again just so he can have a good look around. And lo and behold, it's the local wildlife. Straight out of the bushes, roof across the field, bye-bye Otto. Uh, managed to get him back eventually. But it's just one of those things. He's a young dog. And if it's moving, it, it, it's, you know, it's fair game for him. Come on. It's just one of those learning curves. The hazards of working in the countryside. Come on, leave it alone. The stolen car is beyond repair, and Otto has worked up a fair thirst. You can see... The amount of water he's taking in, and he needs to replenish his fluids. I mean, it might be minus six out there, but uh, it's warm work. And he's got a thick winter coat on. And it might not look it, but he's worked hard there. At a police station in Bradford, PC Lawman's trying to solve the mystery of why the crazed driver who caused the high-speed pursuit drove so recklessly. He may have had drugs in the car. Come on, Murphy. Oh, you can shut up. Murphy, what's this? What's this? P. 
DC lawman sniffer spaniel Murphy is going to give the vehicle the once over. Come on. Murphy joined Zeus and PC Lawman just eight months ago. He's only two years old. As well as drugs, he's trained to find cash and explosives. He's crackers. He's mad. He never stops still. He's just a driven dog. He loves it. He loves work. He's very quickly shown that he can do it. And the big thing with him is he enjoys doing it. Find it. Good lad. Find it. Where is it? Find it. Here you come. Good boy. Good boy, I've found out, have we? We've not found anything. Um, not to say that he's not driving under the influence of drugs, because he might have taken everything that he had. We'll, uh, we'll let him know. But a negative result. But thankfully, he got arrested and. Uh, got stopped from uh, hurting anybody else. In the centre of Leeds, Bella isn't drawing a blank. She's onto something. Bella, go find it, go find it. And the man whose car it is, is getting concerned. A wagging tail is just what PC Moore was hoping for. Bella's telling him she's found something illegal. She loves working, she loves playing. Uh, she's non-stop all the time, and that's what you want, a drugs dog like that, because you know, they'll keep searching for long periods of time. While Bella keeps searching, PC Lawman and Zeus are facing another hot call. Extra Delta 185, I've got reports of a male trying to break into a shop on Tong Street. If you please. PC Lawman always likes to be first on the job. Yeah. But this time it looks like he's missed out. Oh, they've got him. When I got there, he'd got out of the shop and he'd run off and they'd got him. To be so close and they've just got him, you think. <sighs> There's still a role for PC Lawman. The prisoner's not playing ball. Ah! Ah! <sighs> well, it's Jewish. Do you want a van for him? Yeah, yeah. might as well, yeah. What are you doing this for? I stopped for you, guy. Why are you pulling me like this for? Hey, searching you. Calm down. I'll go in and uh, pull up, John. Usually, PC Lawman would send Zeus straight into the scene of the crime. But not this time. I'm not going to put the dog in here. And we can see there's glass everywhere. It's all over here. There's glass all over the side. If Zeus cuts his paw, which he has done, he's off work with stitches in. You know, he's in pain and I'm unable to work him for 10 days. It's not worth the risk. So there's nothing else for it. The head-banging thief might have an accomplice who's still inside the shop. And PC Lawman does like to be first. First and foremost, we're police officers. I'm not just there for the dog chops. I'll get involved in anything. You have to to it's all clear, and all that's left to do is deliver the thief and the big cat pictures he tried to steal to the nearest police station. Nothing in there, nobody in there. Very small. Got a good taste in that, though, not it? While PC Lawman deals with cat burglars in Bradford, in Leeds, Bella is hunting for more drugs. And finding them. Bella. She's indicated in that cup. Yeah. It's like coke or crack, so. Like off, crack. Yeah. Good girl. The police now have enough to charge the driver of the car with possession. <laughs> Good girl. That's nice. Not the world's biggest fine, but it uh, shows that she's working. Dawn, 
PC Lawman's home from work an hour before the end of his shift. He's not cheating his employers, he's allowed. As dog handlers in this force work an hour less per day than a normal beat patrol officer. And they give us that hour to care for the dog, basically. And you have to walk them, feed them, exercise, groom. When I get home off a night shift, I will spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes, putting them fresh water in. These go in the dog's kennels. Putting the food in the bowls. Wife's well, left the uh, leftovers out. Heating food, we've got some food, some heated food. For them. And a big job's cleaning the kennel out. Come on, then. Yes, bouncing, yes, yes. There we go. Does that every time he, fin uh, every time he eats. And now it's bedtime for me. Ooh. Easier said than done when your wife and children are still asleep upstairs. And they'll be up in about 15, 20 minutes. But the more rest they can get, the easier it is for me. And if I wake them up, they keep me awake until they go about 8 o'clock. So it's a lot easier if I just uh, sneak upstairs. So I'll see you later. I'm now releasing the dog. West Yorkshire police have 74 canine cops. Many, like Zeus, are born and bred into police work. Many come through this special breeding unit where the police try to put the right male and female dogs together to make super puppies. Breeding's not an exact science at all, um, and just because you have two good police dogs doesn't mean that they'll produce you a perfect police dog for operational work. It's more to do with pedigree, the mixing of their genes, if you like, and, um, and then finding a dog that also has qualities that we look for, perhaps, in a police dog. It's not precise science, but it's an informed opinion you're increasing your chances of getting a good operational dog from that. This is Beth, a German shepherd. She is the force's latest brood bitch, soon to give birth to a litter of puppies. And it's hoped that many of them will make the grade and eventually become elite frontline police dogs. <coughs> Coming up, Jack finds a murder victim, but can he catch the killer? PC Lawman goes back to school. He's a bad man, boo! And Zimba gets involved in a domestic. <laughs> in West Yorkshire, the dog squad are on the move. Three teams have been sent in to deal with a call for help. Zeus and PC Lawman are in the lead, backed up by Bella and PC Moore, and Simba and PC Worrell. The calls come from a primary school in Bradford. They want the dogs in to show the kids how the dog squad works. Is anybody here really frightened of dogs? No, that's good. What have we got here? Winning the hearts and minds of future generations is important, but the questions they ask can throw you. One that I got one day was, how many times does Zeus have a poo? <laughs> What's that got to do with it? <laughs> well, it um, depends how much he's eaten. Laying down the law is PC Lawman's speciality. We're going to do some searching with our drugs dogs to find some drugs that we're going to hide. These aren't real drugs, just cloths with traces of narcotics on them. They don't just find drugs, these dogs. They also find money and guns, all right? So I'm going to hide these in here, all right? Two-year-old Bella will do the honors. She has no idea where the handlers have hidden the cloths. <laughs> Within seconds, she's just inches away. You think she's in the right place, then? Yeah. 
Good girl! Where's a clever girl? Outside, the children get to see the big dogs in action, and PC Lawman is playing Mr. Lawless for a change. He's a bad man! Woo! You're under arrest for burglary, do you understand? Yes, you shouldn't burgle schools, should you? I enjoy it. The dogs enjoy it. I think the kids get quite a lot out of it. British police dogs are some of the most highly trained in the world. So, so, mate. To detect, to guard, to help break and enter, to control crowds. Some are specially trained to track down killers. This is Jack, a nine-year-old Malinois and his handler, Alan Williams. One of only two dogs in the country who use a special smelling technique to track people. He can even track a person through a crowd, picking out one human scent among thousands. His nose is so sensitive that weeks after a person has walked somewhere, Jack can track their exact route. In Carmarthen, southwest Wales, Jack and Alan Williams are watching TV, waiting for the news that will allow them to reveal how they tracked down a vicious killer. Hello, it was a brutal and violent attack. Hairdresser Kelly Hyde bludgeoned to death on a remote bridal way near her home at Pantafanon near Ammonford. Her body then dragged away and dumped in a stream. Today, a 17-year-old was found guilty of her murder and, for the first time, we can name him as Adrian Jones, who also lived in the village of Pantafanon. Tonight, he's facing a lengthy jail sentence. Kelly Hyde went missing 10 months ago. Only now, with her killer convicted, are Jack and Alan Williams able to shed light on how they cracked the case. Kelly had been missing for three days when officers from Duffet Powers Police began to fear the worst. Their best option was to send in the dogs. And there was only one dog up to the job. Jack sniffed just one item of Kelly's clothing. Quickly, he found a matching scent outside the house where she was last seen. The minute they took him out, tossed him on it, we were away. We came to here. Um, Jack has indicated to me that he wishes to cross the road into that bridal path there. He was really pulling me down this uh, bridal path, well and truly, uh, which is a good indication to me that we're absolutely spot on it. There's a good fella. From a certain point on the bridal path, the dog started to search a particular circle area. Um, and when, when you're in tune with your dog, you understand that it's trying to work out something has happened on this bridal path. Jack turned down to here then, and this is where he showed the, the majority of interest along the trail, which indicated to me that something untoward had happened here. There, there were foliage um, of vegetation pulled out of the bank, a lot of scuff marks here. Um, which were fairly fresh. I presume, going by dog minds, that he's trying to work out a picture in his own head what has actually happened here. I presume he could have, um, but he can't tell us. And then basically from here, he turned down the path towards the stream. Steady. Steady. So basically, we've, um, we've trailed down the path here, came to here, Jack enters the water, picks up a shoe and that's when I notice the, uh, the missing person is um, in the water just laying here. I still look at it now and I think to myself, what a waste. I, I feel for the family, really feel for the family, but it's part of the job which you have to steal yourself with. Jack had done more than just find a body. He'd painted a picture of what happened to Kelly the morning of her murder. When you replay what Jack has done, there's no doubt. He showed me that she was there at the pavement, 
She had crossed the road and something had happened here on the top of this bridal path by his actions, his body language, everything that he did. And then, from there on, um, bringing me down to the, its conclusion. Having found the victim, now Jack had to find her killer. The police had a prime suspect, but needed more evidence to link him to the crime scene. We found there was a person in custody, and um, they wished us to look for elimination trails from the, where the body was found. Jack was able to track the killer from the scene of the murder to where he lived. There is a scent trail there with other contributing evidence would make it uh, part of the evidence package. The evidence package was conclusive. A search of the house which Jack had led them to found the murder weapon, a dumbbell, bloodstained shoes, and Kelly Hyde's dog lead. Back in West Yorkshire, as the sun sets, alarm bells are ringing in Halifax. A car has crashed. PC Benson has just started. In the back is Zimba, his master tracker. He's fantastic at tracking, really. He's, you know, he'll drag me around a track, so he's got a fantastic nose on him. The car hasn't been reported stolen, and no accident has been called in either. Mysteries like this are what Zimba and PC Benson live for. Yeah, still, uh, it was a cold, wet, windy night. Um, I remember the public had seen a car turned over it off the road in the ditch on its roof. But it was empty, so they, they called up for a dog. We think it's come this way, because there's, there's a dent in the ground there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we think it's, it's, it's come over and got it down and flipped it. The driver of the car could have been hurt, lying somewhere on the moor. So, right, I'll get him out and put him on a long lead and we'll, uh, we'll have a search round. Zim, head. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Good lad. Good lad. Good boy. Good lad. Zimba's a good lad because he's tracked down whoever was in the car to this point on the main road. He pulled to the vehicle and he stuck his head inside himself, you know, through the open, one of the open windows and had a good sniff around inside and then put his nose to the ground and it picked up a scent and he, he tracked off a lot away from the vehicle. 50 or 60 metres or so, up, up towards the road, to a point on the road where he's, he's lifted his head as if to say, it's gone, that's it, I've lost it, there, there isn't any more. Just the way he's come out, he's come out of there and he's just come up onto this bit here, so... Dog's given a positive indication of that all the time. Zimba's done enough to get his reward, his favourite toy. But there's a twist in the tale of this crash, an unusual one. The upshot of it was that the lad had phoned a taxi, got out of the vehicle, phoned a taxi, which had picked him up from that area, so no one's wandered off into the actual moorland across across Saddleworth Moor. You know, I was quite pleased with that. He's a good lad then. Yeah, then. He's a good boy. In Bradford, PC Lawman hasn't started his night shift yet, but he's getting ready for it. Rats. Why couldn't it be raining? Or hailing or sleeting any minute, any second. By reading his daughter her bedtime story. To play on the computer. Oh, Henry, stop doing your homework this minute. Time to turn... With a little help from his best friend. Hello, Hello Zeus. Come on, then. <laughs> Lay down. That's it. Story time. He walked to school, he walked home from school, he watched the TV, he watched... The Zeus TV. came from a lady in the Pontefract area. The big plus for me was he was brought up with the lady and her grandkids. And he's just... he's a big softy at home. And the countryside was so dangerous. Marauding. Marauding chickens. 20 miles away, Zimba and PC Benson are already on another call. XW from X for Delta 175. We've had reports that there's a male threatening a female there with a knife. Zimba and PC Benson will take this one. Zimba not only tracks, he attacks. Six five, thank you. Uh, 
a lady had phoned in to us to, to say that uh, a boyfriend or partner had, had threatened her while she was in the flat with a, with a knife. Um, obviously threatened to do some serious harm to her. She'd managed to es escape from the premise and, uh, and get out. Good boy. Even though the woman is out and safe, the situation Zimba is likely to face is as serious as it gets. As soon as he gets to an incident and, he, and he's out the back of the van, he's on the collar, he, he knows something's going on, he's, he's, he stands proud, his head's up and he's looking around. He knows when the serious business starts, that's it, he just he switches on because he knows what he's got to do. Armed police are already at the scene, but they know that Zimba will be more effective in helping the negotiators to persuade the man inside to come out peacefully. Yeah. We've got one minute, mate, then we'll put him door through. It's as simple as that. Come and open it. All right, we'll put it through then. Coming up, drama in the maternity ward. What we're going to do? Will Zimba be sent in? And Jack on the trail of another missing person. where a woman claimed she was threatened with a knife, the stalemate continues, despite the noise made by Zimba and the threats made by the police negotiators to break the door down. It seems the man with the knife has taken himself off to bed. The house is in darkness, or was. At last, a man is talking to the police. What's going on is that Zimba's about to be sent in unless the man comes out. Good. Right. Fast. Good lad. As soon as he opened that door up, that was it. Zimba you know, took sight of him and was, was totally focused on him. He was wanting to, to get at him if, he, if need be. The man isn't worried about the threat from the armed police. His only concern is that Zimba remains on PC Benson's lead. It's, it's a cracking result for Zimba because, see, he was totally focused on the male. Uh, no one else, everyone else was around, but he just totally focused on that, so he knew what he was doing. Hey, big lad. He was a clever boy then. He gets loads and loads of praise because he's done his job, and, you know, he's done a good job. You are such a clever boy. It's almost dawn, and West Yorkshire's police brood bitch, Beth, is ready to give birth. The first pup is usually the hardest. She should have given birth to her second by now, but something's wrong, and there's no police vet on site. They'll have to get Beth to the nearest civilian one, and quickly. They're gonna have to take her in, because if she happens to get into trouble here, what we're we gonna do? The time we get that, she may be in serious trouble. Hey, you oh, you're lovely. Oh, For Beth, things are going from bad to worse. During the journey to the vet surgery, she's given birth to another pup, her second. It's not looking good. Beth is becoming increasingly distressed. German shepherds usually give birth to between five and eight puppies. With at least three more inside, there's nothing for it but a cesarean. For many anxious parents, the wait outside the maternity room is never easy. Oh, 
many mains? Nail, two. Two. Three. Three. That's half anyway. That's good. This is a girl. Four. And the last one. This will be a boy. Not a girl. Two Wait, girls. Two girls, four boys. So just cover them over like that, keep them warm. So he's just stitching up now. Okay. I'm just doing the rubbing the pups up. All right. Uh, so we'll give another quarter of an hour. The caesarean has saved the day and produced four more healthy male pups. Good news for the police. More males make it through basic training than females. And good news for Beth. So everything okay? Everything okay? Breeding and training are one of the most important factors in creating elite police dogs. Something the Dufford Powers Police know only too well. They've raised one of Britain's finest missing person dogs, Jack. But this time, Jack's not after someone missing in Wales. The Gloucestershire police need his help. Alan Williams and Jack are already on the scene. An elderly man is missing, and the pressure is on to find him before he comes to any harm. So there's no outside influence. Alan Williams will not be told what the search teams already know. All he can give Jack is the scent from a piece of the missing man's clothing. We were called to Gloucester regarding a missing person, an elderly gent, a couple of days after he'd gone missing. They had no idea where this person had gone, just the fact that his car was, had been left at this, this particular gateway. It doesn't take long for Jack to pick up a trail. The search teams, not far behind, hang on to his every move. You can normally tell with Jack when, when there's a matching trail there because his whole body language changes. His whole body starts to expand. He's more urgent and there's more aggression in what he does. When he comes up against an obstacle, he will try and push through it. I want to get over this, I want to get over it. And that gives me the added incentive to know I'm, I'm really spot on. Jack is clearly on a strong trail, but worryingly, it leads straight to the river. It's becoming clear that Jack believes the old man was here. He's on it, and all of a sudden, bang, he's coming yeah. in. If we keep going, then all of a sudden he doesn't do that. We've got, we've got him here. Retracing where th this gentleman had walked, uh, even down to the individual pontoons, where he'd gone into, presumably, thinking about what he was going to do. Everything that, that Jack does tells you a picture. Jack wanted to go further. I want to get further in. And if he can't, if I hold him back, he then start to mow the water to say, this is where I want to go. It's, it's in here. What you've told me so far fits in exactly what the evidence that we've got. got you. Yeah, Pass this information over to the Pulsa, who then offered me some uh, information which I wasn't privy to previously. They had found a walking stick and a pair of glasses on that pontoon. Virginia, so much, Jim. As is normal practice with all the operational cases we go to, um, we make sure that nobody gives us any information whatsoever, so there's no chance of influencing the dog. Based on Jack's indications, the search teams will now focus only on the river and what's in it. But already the news is in that an elderly man's body has been found a mile downstream. Jack was spot on, tragically. At West Yorkshire's elite police dog training school near Doncaster, Beth and her pup seem to be doing fine, and Chief Inspector Meredith is keeping a close eye on her latest brood. Having such a, a shaky start, a certainly Kinney, without his intervention and quick thinking about getting the vets up to start the process off, with one of them getting stuck. Hi, Beth! Look at you, you're lovely. These may be just playful puppies now, but Meredith hopes that they will all grow up to be super police dogs. Youngsters like these are the future for every dog squad. 
You can see yourself that they're really robust, they're really inquisitive, um, they're showing all signs of being healthy, developing nicely, and for me, that's just, you know, making us stronger for the future. There are 2,000 police dogs in the UK. Every year, they help arrest or subdue thousands of criminals and suspects. Like Jack, the human search dog, they are always ready for the next time. The police need to send in the dogs.